Good morning, First Night Church. Good to have you with us again this Sunday, second Sunday of the Easter experience. Welcome one and all. Special welcome to the young people and the children out there. Uh, and it's also a request if any young people and children want to uh, take part in the worship services, want to do a scripture reading or be involved in some other way, then by all means email the church or email myself. From constant contacts, you can find my email address. Love to have you included. And like the last few weeks, we're doing this in different people's homes. We're in uh, Harold Sinyard's house, Harold and Heather Sinyard, and we're Peter McDonald's and his family's home. So we'll be coming to you from different places. So welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning. <clears throat> Come, bring your doubts, your hopes, your faith. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Come, bring your questions, your wonderings, your misgivings. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Come, bring your fear, your sorrow, your joy. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Come, let us worship God. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray. We are your witnesses, O God, that in your suffering and death, do not have the final word. Praise be to you for the dawning of this new day, when gentleness rules overnight. Spirit makes way for true unity, and love always wins. This is the day you have given us. We rejoice and we will be glad in it. Amen. From Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. God always blesses the reading of his holy word.
Massey Lectures, presented by CBC Radio on an annual basis, offers a, a forum for contemporary Canadian thinkers to address very specific critical issues that may affect Canada or indeed may affect the whole world. In the early 2000s, Stephen Lewis was invited to be one of the guest lecturers, which he accepted. And by all accounts, his lectures were well received. So much so that he was offered to view give the lectures to a publishing company, they were buying the lectures in book form, which took place and was released as Race Against Time, published in 2005. In the foreword of that book, Stephen Lewis says that he was reluctant to have the lectures put in book form, because he knows that a lecture is meant to be listened to, is meant to be heard, it's not meant to be read. I'd agree with that. Every lecture, there's a certain inclination of the speaker, certain tone qualities, there are emotions that come from the speaker. We can't capture that in printed word in book form. This past week I was studying some channels on TV like I'm sure a lot of us are doing since COVID-19 has come into place. I came across a movie, well, a documentary movie, of the rock group Queen. Towards the end of the movie, Queen was invited to be a part of the Live Aid concert. It took place in 1985. They were trying to raise money for the famine in Africa at that time. And the moment Freddie Mercury, the, the lead singer for Queen, stepped on the stage in front of the, the crowd at Wembley Stadium in London, he had them in the palm of his hand. He was controlling the show. He would say something, the crowd would respond back. Or they would repeat the same lyrics together, sing the same songs together. It's a very much a quid pro quo give and take between the performer and the audience. A number of years ago, at the Gower Street United Church, when uh, it was a Good Friday worship service, Seven Words from the Cross, and Reverend Dr. Moni Hodder was one of the guest preachers. If memory serves, he's preached on the word, it is finished. It is finished. It was a tremendous sermon he offered that day. The sermon, as he got towards the end of the, end of the sermon, he had one hand on the pulpit, one elbow rather on the pulpit, and he was leaning forward across the pulpit with his other hand towards the congregation. And I realized, as I was watching him, listening to him, and looking at side to side, the whole congregation, we all of a sudden started leaning forward to greet his hand, to lean forward to what he was going to say next. Could have heard a pin drop in the sanctuary that day. Could have heard a pin drop. So Peter, when he addresses the crowd in Jerusalem that day, I think he had all these things going for him. He had the intellectual ability, he knew what was happening. And the performance style, he knew that he would be one with the crowd. And he had the biblical uh, knowledge, the theological knowledge, the homiletical knowledge, to offer something of immense importance to the crowd as well. And what if you were part of that crowd that day? What if you were there? What would it have been like? What would it have been like to be there? Can you imagine being part of that? I mean, by now, the gossip and the rumor mill, if, if the web had been existing back then, I'm sure it would have crashed. It would have crashed in halt. All the gossip and all the rumors that would have circling around Jerusalem. Many of the people there would know none of what was happening. Some of the people know a little bit, some of the people know a little bit more, but no one knew the whole truth. No one knew the whole story. Now, Peter and the disciples were there, 11 of them, and Peter decided it was time. Peter stepped up. And right from the beginning, he had the crowd with him, right in the palm of his hand, because he didn't hang on every single word. He begins by addressing the Israelites. Another indication of just how uh, real, how raw, how new this kind of stuff was. The faith had not yet gone past the Jewish world. All of you, listen up, he says. Listen up. I want to tell you about Jesus, my friend Jesus of Nazareth. He's more than just a great person. He was a great healer, worker of miracles. He healed the blind, made the lame walk. He's also a great 
teacher, prodigal son, good Samaritan. Stories like that would work in our hearts and minds for years later. This person, Jesus, my friend, more than just a prophet. Peter says to the crowd, he was the Messiah. The one that we've been expecting, talking about, praying about, reading about in Scripture for years past, for centuries now. This is the one. This is the guy. This is the Jesus of Nazareth we're talking about. He is the Messiah. He looks at the crowd and points out his finger and says, Now you. You don't see the crowd going, What, me? What, me? Yeah, you. You. We're witnesses. People look around each other, I'm sure, in the crowd. We're witnesses to what? We're witnesses to this whole story. We've heard it for the very first time, but you're witnesses now. Kathleen uh, Brostrom in the book Feasting on the Word, reference book, Feasting on the Word. She says, let Jesus be more than just a name to you. Let Jesus be more than just a name to you. Let Christ be your Savior. Hear with your heart as well as with your ears. Like seeing something for the very first time. Not just the sun rise, but the feeling the warmth on your face. Peter stirred the people to the very depths of their souls that day. Hearing the story for the first time. And the first witnesses to the story, to the good news. His words wrapped around them like a comfortable, warm blanket. Can you imagine what the conversation was like when people left that day, going about their business? And they said, well, Did you hear any of that before? That was amazing. We were witnesses. We saw it happen. We know the whole story. We know the good news. For us, Say, listen up. It's not going to quite be quite enough. We need to listen up. We also need to wake up. Whether really you've heard the good news once, twice, a hundred times, a thousand times, it is still true. And it still stirs the depths of our souls. At Easter, we touch the holy. At Easter, we touch the holy. At Easter, the good news reverberates all around the world. The playing field becomes level for all humanity. The resurrected Jesus, all things become new. Let us share a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the miracle of Easter, for all that took place, the many teachings you offered. We struggle to learn those teachings we engage in in the days and weeks ahead. We're still basking in the Easter glow, the love that you showed for the entire world in that one moment in time. It is a moment that has relived down through the centuries. We thank you, God. Thank you for all you've done for us this Easter moment. Not just a singular event, it's something that happened so long ago that it plays forever in our minds and our hearts, carry through into the future. So future generations will hear the story, hear the good news, the same good news that Peter expressed to the people in the crowd in Jerusalem as told in the book of Acts. We miss of God, as Easter glow surrounds us. God, hear our prayer. Creator God, we continue to find ourselves still in the midst of the struggle with the COVID virus. For weeks now, people have been shut in their homes, 
practicing isolation. Doing so for good reason. Try and contain the spread of the disease. Try and lessen the burden on our essential workers, the healthcare workers, doctors, staff, and all the facilities. Help us now to continue to help the government, both provincially and federally, to do our part to minimize the loss. Have those who experience loss, our prayers are with them. The grief they feel, the tragedy of this moment, may your love, O God, rain down upon them, and mercy run through them like a river. God, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we also pray for ourselves this Easter, for our own learning, how we've witnessed again in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has left a mark upon our soul and will carry us to further his mission. We are now his hands, his feet, his voice in the world. With Easter experience, he leveled the playing field of humanity. It's up to us to carry that message forward, to teach it to new generations. So others will know you and of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Others will be welcomed into that community of Christ, community of saints that surround us all. Together we will forge a new head, heading. Together we will go forward with victory in our minds, the health of our loved ones, the love in our hearts. We ask your blessing upon us this day. We continue to celebrate Easter, the miracle of the resurrection. God, hear our prayer. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You are Lord, O oh Lord, our holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. In all these prayers, O oh God, in your unconditional love, we ask that you respond. God, Mother and Father of us all, be with us as we pray together. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive and us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And this is not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Joy with 
Grace of God, the love of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Go in peace. Amen.